As we're watching Joe Rodolfi be handed the baseball, the left-hander will be sent to the mound trying to salvage a split here with the Hartford squad or the HI Express team as they're called. Rutland losing that first game 4-1 to one as they had 12 strikeouts registered against them from the pitcher Sean Fernandez. And the rest of that defense, we're going to have Ryan Carter at the catcher spot. Aaron Bloomer will get the start at first base. Matt Merritt's going to be your second baseman. T.J. Oliver gets the start at short. Mike Sorelli will be the third baseman. Alex Muskowski is going to be the left fielder. Rob Dorian in center. And Mike McMahon will get the start in right field. And leading things off for the IHA Express team is Matt Paz. And Rodolfi will start things off with a strike. It'll be Matt Paz, Sean Stone, Pat Riley. And in the cleanup spot will be Nick Avery. Again, the HI Express squad with that 4-1 to win on St. Peter's Field. And it's not a must win, but it's surely a big win here for Rutland in the second game. <clears throat> They're a little bit hands are tied a little bit right now with the departure of Mitch Blair, the injury to Bill Schuldice, and then Chad Ryan becoming ill during the first game. So they're minus some key people. Of course, Rodolfi, big-time pitcher, Division One pitcher, played outstanding. Pitched some great games for his career. I did his junior and senior Babe Ruth championship games. Wasn't able to, wasn't allowed to cover his high school games. And he'll start things off right there with another strike. So he's going to have a full count, 3-2 to Matt Paz. Paz, the left fielder, this ball game for HI Express. Again, what it is, is basically it's a Hartford team. And that'll be a walk, and that'll be the leadoff runner on. Now bring up Sean Stone. He'll play third base in the second game. Yeah, some upcoming games I really want to talk about. I'm going to give you plenty of time to get here, but July 19th and July 20th, that's a Saturday and a Sunday game. Those are both noontime starts. The 19th is a nine-inning ball game against Chester, and then 20th is a noontime start against Brattleboro, but that's a doubleheader, so plenty of baseball still to come up on Channel 15 and live and in person you can get down here. And then the 22nd of July, that's a 5.30 start against Woodstock. And then a doubleheader, the 26th against Windsor. And that is going to be Muskowski giving chase, and it'll be a foul ball. And I already mentioned the infield, Aaron Bloomer, Matt Merritt, T.J. Oliver, Sorelli, the outfields, Muskowski, Dorian, and McMahon. Carter behind the plate. This is back-to-back -back games he's got in his doubleheader, and with the shortage of catchers, he's going to be seeing a lot of work behind the dish. Now that's why we, we talked about depth at the positions, and boy, it can go away fast with injuries and defections, and that's going to be thrown over to first base, and Bloomer will make the grab, the runner back safe. And again, we're scheduled for seven. The first game was a 4-1 to win for HI Express. Oh, great pitch by Rodolfi. And again, of course, being a left-handed pitcher, he's looking right at the base runner at first base. He's got a decent move anyways to first base. <coughs> So Rodolfi with an 0-2 count, and that's going to be hit to Matt Merritt, and he's going to have a double play. That's going to be the second time in this doubleheader. Matt Merritt's had a line drive hit to him and finished off with a double play. In the first ball game, he caught a line drive and then flipped it to second for the double play. Here he just goes to first, and that'll erase that walk. I'll bring up Pat Riley now. So the base is clean and two down, Pat Riley. Matt Merritt's been real solid all season long at second base for post-31. They're in the field defensively in a red, white, and blue uniforms. Joe Rodolfi, the lefty from Rutland, on the mound, and he'll be right there on the inside corner. Tell you, if he can get that rhythm going, I've seen Joe pitch where he can go 9, 10, 11, 12 batters retired in a row. And that one will cork away like a corkscrew and bounce to the backstop, and it'll be a 1-2 count. And Avery, of course, sits on deck at the cleanup spot. That pitching performance by Fernandez in the first game for HI Express or Hartford, whatever you want to call him, very dominant for the first four innings. And then had enough in him to hang around. That's going to be off the fist, popped up, and by the reaction, I'll say it's out of play. Nobody really made a move on it. They just kind of watched it. So they'll just be fouled off, and we will remain at a 1-2 count. There are two outs. Thanks to that double play. That'll be in the dirt. You can make the call yourself. We'll have a 2-2 count. So, yeah, Rutland and Hartford both came in 3-1 and one in league play after that first game. Hartford now goes to 4-1. and one. Obviously, Rutland goes to 3-2. and two. 
And that'll bounce in the dirt to the backstop as he'll work it to a full count. He's already had one walk in his first inning. So Rodolfi takes the walk back to the rubber, gets set, and you see him kind of focus here. And he'll, he'll, he will walk his second batter of the inning. That's how big that double play was. And that will bring up the cleanup batter, Nick Avery. So Avery then Fernandez, who's playing first base this ball game. Then his Hartford squad coming off a uh, not only the, the win here but on the road. They played Brattleboro and got the win in Brattleboro. It's always a tough matchup. Rodolfi this time will go to the fastball and have it tail up and away from the right-handed hitter for swinging strike. And uh, there's the throw to first. You can catch all post. 31 American Legion Baseball action right on television on Channel 15. You can also go to the website and watch it online at www.pegtv.com. So you can basically pick up American Legion Baseball anywhere. You have computer access to throw down, and they are going to have them on a tag by Merritt. They're going to have a double play and throw a runner out trying to steal that inning. So we'll go to the bottom half of the first, scoreless. So Tyler Perrin, he'll be going to the mound. He'll be the pitcher here for the HI Express squad. And he's going to be looking at Rob Dorian, Aaron Bloomer, Ryan Carter, and then Jeff Bloomer will bat in that cleanup spot. And the rest of that defense has Ryan McGuire getting started at the catcher's position. Sean Fernandez, who was a winning pitcher in the first game, is now the first baseman. Ryan Wetzel, second base. Nick Avery's a shortstop. Sean Stone's at third. Matt Paz is your left fielder. Logan Skelza is in center field. What a center field job he did in that first ball game. And Pat Riley is in right field. And i got to tell you, Rob Dorian's just got to be beside himself. That pitch on the outside corner called a strike. Rob struck out three times in the first ball game, twice looking, once swinging, and was just completely unhappy with the strike zone. That's going to be back to the pitcher. And what a lob to first. He will get Dorian out on that 1-3 ground out. Now Aaron Bloomer up. Not a lot of offense to talk about in that first ball game. Ryan Carter had a double. In the first inning, that was the only extra base hit of the ball game for post-31. And then they kind of squandered a bases loaded via three walks. But nobody out in the fourth inning. That's going to go to that's going to go to shortstop and off the pitcher to the shortstop. And it'll put Bloomer on first base as a one over to Avery, who just couldn't get a handle on it and make his balance. Unofficially, I think you have to give him an infield hit on that. And Ryan Carter up now. The running game never a factor for Rutland in that first ball game. He just didn't string together enough base runners to really make it a factor. <laughs> and so Carter, like I said, had a double in the first ball game in the first inning at the plate. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first, scheduled for seven. And Tyler Perrin from the stretch will throw a good pitch. Bloomer on deck. Jeff Bloomer. There's a twins out there, right? Aaron and Jeff Bloomer for post 31. Coached by Tony Sorelli, George Bennett, and that'll be a ball. And the other assistant coach, of course, is Jamie Briggs. Ron Fairbanks is the general manager, and the back girl is Natasha McPhee. And you are watching Peg TV Channel 15 Sports, covering all American Legion post 31 baseball games yet again. Your leader in local sports, Peg TV Channel 15. If you can't catch us on the tube, you can get us on the internet and watch the games right on your computer. And another unsatisfied call. That's Carter. Watch that one go well below the knee for a strike. One, two count. One out, one on, bottom of the first. That's going to be the opposite field, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. And they'll have runners at first and second. You see Bloomer pulling up at second base. So Carter fought that pitch off. Just so strong, he was able to lift it to the opposite field. Now the DH, again, as he was in the first ball game, Jeff Bloomer. You cannot read you to watch the games on the television, but I'd love to have you get to an American Legion baseball game live and in person. Fill those bleachers up. Get some bodies here. And again... Strike called. So Tyler Perrin trying to work himself out of a little bit of a jam here in the bottom of the first. Two on and one out. And that will be inside and off the plate. And he'll have a 1-1 one -one count now. Now Bloomer's up now. T.J. Oliver, 
should be the on deck hitter, and he's going to be the shortstop in his second game. In the first ball game, TJ played right field, then moved to the shortstop position. He's getting the start at short. Chad Ryan, not feeling well, went home. That'll be outside for a ball. Now again, no admission. You just get to the games, bring a lawn chair, sit the bleachers, sit right by home base wherever you want to, and uh, great way to spend a weekend or a weeknight after work. Come and watch some local baseball action and support the American Legion team. And that's going to load them up. So the base is juiced here. Now, like I said, they had a bases loaded, no out situation in the fourth inning in the first ball game and end up with just one run. So they've got to capitalize on these opportunities. They get TJ Oliver up now for the first time in a ball game. Got the bases loaded and they had a little conference between the pitcher Perrin and McGuire the catcher. Yeah, and see if he'll go back to the full windup as opposed to the stretch. Yeah, he is. I guess I told you many times before, a lot of the pitchers just feel more comfortable with the full windup. And with the bases loaded, that's what he went to. And that's going to be in low, and it gets kind of the catcher's butt area and stays from being a wild pitch, and that'll be a ball. So Oliver with a chance to give his team the lead here in the bottom of the first. And again, it was an HI Express 4-1 to win in the first ball game. You're watching game number two, and boy, did he turn on that and drove it past the third baseman. He's going to score Carter for the second run. Yes. So Oliver with a two RBI single down at first base getting congratulations. And again, that ball on the inside corner is able to get around and really rip it down the third baseline. Yeah, so Bloomer and Carter score. Aaron Bloomer and Jeff Bloomer ends up at second base, and Oliver with two RBIs at first. And now Mike Sorelli up the third baseman. It's already a different looking ball game than that first one as they got the timely hit when they needed it. Still just one out and two on. You can see Sorelli getting set, relaxing at the plate and that's gonna go down to Avery at short. He's gonna take the lead runner. Yep, kept contact with the bag and good quick play by Avery to take the lead runner out. They'll still leave two on with two out now. So Sorelli will reach on a fielder's choice. Oliver ends up at second base and Alex Smiskowski up the left fielder for post 31. And obviously a left-handed hitter as you see him step in there. Of course they're playing off the bag at first. It's Fernandez not holding the runner on with two on. And that wrapped itself around the plate but didn't make the corner and it'll be ball one. So post 31 able to break through here and have a 2-0 two -nothing, two -nothing lead trying to add to it here in the bottom of the first from St. Petersfield. And boy, the catcher, McGuire, able to knock it down like a shortstop backhanding it with his glove. Not really the proper technique to slide out, but got the job done. Kept the runners at first and second. And they have shifted slightly over toward the first baseline for the left-handed hitting Muskowski. Perrin will miss high. Again, if you need to schedule for Post 31 Baseball, you can check the Rutland Herald every day. They post it, strike called on the corner, listen to the radio station, they talk about baseball action. Or you can actually have, they have these little schedules made up, just scattered through all the different businesses in the area that have the Post 31 well, home and away schedule. And that's going to be foul out of play. So he'll stay alive with those two strikes. It's a full count, three and two. If Muskowski can extend the inning, they're going to have Matt Merritt on deck for post-31. Merritt had a couple hits batting from the ninth spot in that first ball game. And he'll swing through, but the damage done. 2-0 post-31 in the lead as we head to the top of the second on Munger Vision. Joe Rodolfi has been staked to a two-run lead going into the top of the second. He's going to be looking at Nick Avery, Sean Fernandez, and Tyler Perrin, the 3 do up for the HI Express squad. And that, the story told to me was that the Hartford Post, I think it was 26, I'm not sure, they um, for, were financially unable to field a team. And this is a lot of talent from the Hartford area, the Hartford High School area, varsity team. So the Holiday Inn Express is what uh, financed the team, donated the money needed for the for the startup of the team. I heard, I, I, the figure I heard was $10,000, and that's why they're, 
not a post team, but they're the I the H I Express Holiday and Express team. Tough times all over the world econ economically for everybody, and even sprinkles into the athletic entertainment type area like Legion Baseball. Shame to see it for any aspect of the country of Great as ours to be running to the ground like it has been. And yeah, it is a political statement, but just look at the state of the world. So Rodolfi with a full count, three balls, two strikes, and that's going to be McMahon settling in and making the catch. McMahon, you remember, we saw him come in and pitch some very good innings for post-31, and he gets to start here in right field, and he'll make the catch. Remember, he's a member of that Red Thunder team. Now the first baseman for this ballgame, Sean Fernandez. Like I said, the winning pitcher in the first ballgame with 12 strikeouts. Just a masterful job. In the first three innings, he'd amassed eight strikeouts. And he'll rip that foul as that one kind of floated and hung on that breaking ball. And man, did he get around and crank on that. With the aid of that double play, Rodolfi's faced four batters and he's four for four, which is a misleading. St oh, he think they're going to peel and he will have gone for a strike. Getting away with Mercy Rooks in a seven inning game, and you've got to go at least. The team behind has to have at least five full innings of that bat. You have to go five innings at bat. Whether it's like if it's HI Express, he'd get through the top of the fifth. If it was Rutland, they'd go through the bottom of the fifth and be ahead by 10 runs. Hopefully, that won't come into play. And it looks like the weather's going to hold off. Rodolfi will step back off the rubber as the batter had asked for time and step back. Fernandez set now. Rodolfi to the plate. And that's going to be down to first base unassisted. And there's Bloomer with the step on the bag. And that little number down to first will be another out. Number 10, the pitcher, Tyler yeah, now Tyler Perrin, the pitcher up. Rodolfi had those two walks in the first inning. The double play helped. And then they threw out Riley trying to steal second base. He's got two out right now. Nobody on. And a chance for a 1-2-3 inning. It's Tyler Perrin. Steps in from the right side and will take a ball. Again, real quickly, that defense is Aaron Bloomer at first, Matt Merritt's at second, TJ Oliver is at shortstop, Mike Sorelli's at third base, Ryan Carter behind the dish. That's going to be fouled into the screen for strike one. We'll have a 1 1 count. Alex Muskowski is your left fielder, Rob Dorian, of course, in center field, and Mike McMahon getting a start in right field. The losing pitcher in that first ball game, Zach Aquistope, six strikeouts and was real solid from the third inning on. And that breaking ball will nick the corner and become a 1-2 count on the strike call. And the outfield basically just playing straight away right now. In the dirt for a 2-2 count. So Rodolfi, like I had mentioned before, able to record his uh, Junior Babe Ruth Championship game and his Senior Babe Ruth Championship game will miss there. And he's got a lot of experience on the mound. He's got a 3-2 count right now. That's going to be on the line. Dorian will pull up, take it on the bounce, and with two down, they'll have a base runner over at first, H. I Express will, and that'll be their first hit of the ball game. We've had a couple base runners because of walks, but that's the first base hit. Now Logan Skell's up, and man, he had four putouts in the first ball game. But what a graceful center field he played! He really tracks the ball well and goes back on it easy. Very impressive defensive player in center field. So a two down in the second, trailing two nothing. The HI Express squad at the plate trying to get something started. And of course, we've got some more American Legion baseball action for you coming up on Channel 15 with a doubleheader. Hopefully, they'll be able to get that in. It's against Essex in a non-league game. And then South Royalton. So some more games to be looking for either online or on Channel 15 itself. And Rodolfi with that throw to first. He's got a better move than that. He's pretty sly over there. For, of course, being left-handed, he's looking right at first base. And he'll come to plate this time. He's talking about his knee kick. And they got to go back on that ball. And that's going to be... Oh! Great effort. Sorelli flat out tried. He came up about a foot, foot and a half short, but boy, he hustled after it. So Mike Sorelli, who just recently graduated from MSJ, will head back in position at third base. A lot of effort, but just a fall ball strike. 
0 oh, 2 the count. Looking for his first strikeout of the ball game he is Rodolfi. The lefty set. And Carter with a great job right there, sliding out, making the stop, keeping a runner down at first base. Like I said, he's caught both ends of this doubleheader, and it's game time. Temperature was 81 degrees. Very humid day. And if you've never put on a catcher's gear and squad behind a plate for two seven inning games, you just don't know what you're missing. A lot of fun. That's going to be down to Matt Merritt. He'll wait, pick it up, flip the first, got him. We'll go into the bottom of the second. 2 0 post 31 with the lead over the HI Express squad from Hartford. So Rutland's Matt Merritt getting bumped up from the ninth spot to the eighth spot this ball game. He'll lead things off here in the bottom of the second. Makes contact deep in the hole. Pass the shortstop Avery for a base hit. And like I said, there's doubleheader Merritt now with three base hits between the two games. He'll head back to first base and he'll have the leadoff batter on. And Joe Rodolfi batting for himself will step in there at the number nine spot. Then top of the order, Rob Dorian on deck. Rutland able to pick up two runs in that first inning against the HI Express squad. And of course, Rodolfi, obviously, if you're watching, he's a left-handed batter. And just there ahead of the stack. It was close. Merritt just kind of skipped in there and just avoided being tagged out. Fernandez came over to meet the ball. I think that's what gave him just enough room to sneak by. So again, Tyler Perrin on the mound from the stretch. Long look into the sign. Will miss outside. He's very preoccupied with that runner over at first base. Okay, the home base umpire talking about something that's a new rule about a Bach. I don't think he's going to call. I think he's going to give it a warning. I can only pick up pits, bits and pieces of what he was talking about there, but he said it's a new rule. You can't do, go to his mouth, I think he said, and that's a warning. So Tyler Perrin with a one ball, no straight count. We'll throw it at first. This time Merritt well back ahead of the throw. And game number two is a doubleheader. Again, hope you've enjoyed the... Uh, the all-star high school basketball games between Western Mass and Vermont. The men and women's games has been on Channel 15. And tried to button, didn't bring it down. Bun it high and threw it, and that'll be a strike, and we'll have a 1-1 count. And now the field umpire is going to come and talk to the pitcher, Tyler Perrin. I don't know. They checked the count, I believe, yes. And it is correct. Two balls, one strike. So Perrin trying to get settled in out there. Before he can even start thinking about throwing strikes, he'll throw to first. And again, like I said, very preoccupied with Matt Merritt over at first base. He's over there because of a single, and there's nobody down. He was a leadoff batter here in the bottom of the second. Rodolfi shows bump, brings it back, and will slap the ball down the third baseline. Foul. You see that in softball a lot. Show bump, pull it back, slap play. But with a 2-2 count, you got to wonder if they're going to pull off any kind of gimmick here and just go back to the straight protective plate and swing. You never know. It's really it's a coin flip. In that first game, Fernandez was just so fluid in catching and firing. In this game, the start here, Perrin very deliberate between pitches in the whole different circumstances a while, so base runner's already on. That pitch was high, and we'll have a full count to Rodolfi. And that's going to be over the shortstop's glove. And on the run was Merritt. He's going to try to stretch it to third base. The throw coming in. He's going to be there. He was off on a steal. A hit and run, actually. And that's what got him over to third base. And then Rodolfi smartly came up on the trail to second base. So they employed the hit and run. Rodolfi reached out, hit it to the opposite field, past Avery at short. And post 31's got something happening here. With second and third, nobody out on top of the order. Dorian up. He grounded out to the pitcher pair in his first time up. Aaron Bloomer on deck. And you see Perrin going back to the full windup with runners at second and third. And nasty looking breaking ball. Had Dorian diving out for it. And that'll be a swinging strike. 
Nice piece of hitting there by Rodolfi. And Tyler Perrin, long stairs in between pitches. And yeah, that's going to be a tough play to get. Dorian, he's so fast, and he's going to be... Tell you what, he can get it down the line, and he's fast anyways, and that was just an almost impossible play right from the get-go. And uh, the base is loaded. So Bloomer, Aaron Bloomer coming up with bases loaded. And nobody out. So a big moment in the game really early in the contest. Nobody out in the makings of a big inning here for post-31. And I'm not sure. Two umpires are going to get together and have a conference. They've had almost as much TV time as the players have this ball game. And it was brief. Whatever it was, it was brief. That's what Dorian at first, Rodolfi at second, and Merritt at third base. There's been three consecutive hits here. Merritt's hit, and then Rodolfi's base hit, and then that little infield hit by Dorian. And Aaron Bloomer. Big swing and a miss. Bloomer had an infield hit and scored a run back in the first inning. We're in the second. Ron already threw the order twice. Guess we're getting a second look at Perrin. And again, 2 nothing. post-31 with the lead. That's going to be high and inside, and it broke late, and it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one count. But uh, again, they're, they're in a position here to have a big inning early in the contest, something they were unable to establish against Fernandez, the first pitcher in the first ball game for IH Express. That'll be a foul ball. That'll become two strikes now. And they're right in the portion of the order, 2-3-4, where you want to be. Ryan Carter is the on-deck hitter, and then Jeff Bloomer, the DH. And Zach Aquista pace with a deltoid injury, unable to swing the bat. He was the losing pitcher in the first ball game. Didn't pitch well, just... And that will slip off the table and be a ball as they stretched it about as far outside on that corner as they could take it. Good eye right there by Aaron Bloomer. So a 2-2 count. And Tyler Perrin. And that's going to be down. They're going to try to come home and cut the run. That's a force out. That's not a tag play. So they'll get the out right there. That's big. So that'll go force out, 5-2. And a fielder's choice for Bloomer. Now Carter up. He had a single and scored a run back in the first inning. He had a double in the first ball game. Of course, there's always that possibility of the double play. With the bases loaded, you have a lot more combinations to put together to create a double play. There's one out. Base is still juice for post-31. Bottom of the second, they got the 2-0 lead. And that will be in the dirt. And a nice stop behind the plate by the catcher, McGuire. Perrin working. First two innings. A lot of batters so far. Big swing right there by Carter. He... <laughs> he was wound up for that one, and that'll be a 1-1 one -one count. They'll check the ball, see if it's scuffed up as it hit that press box in the back there, and they'll say it's okay and put the ball back into play to the pitcher, number 10, Tyler Perrin. Yeah, he faced seven batters, Perrin did, in the first inning alone. He's on batter number five here in the second inning. And a good eye by Carter laying off that breaking ball. He's had some issues with breaking balls this year. And that was a very good disciplined watch right there. So it goes to a 2-1 count. Of course, Carter, I'll have to say it, but I will. Strong guy. He can leave the yard. That's going to be deep and hold to Avery. He's going to throw the ball away, and that will allow the run to come home. Yeah, they're going to hold. They had started to wave Bloomer to second, and he put the brakes on, and that came off the fence hard, and the field are able to get there, but they will get the run in. That was Matt Merritt. Or I was Rodolfi, I'm sorry, that came in to score. As it goes now, four to nothing, Rutland. And this is Jeff Bloomer, the DH. And that'll be foul down the first baseline over toward Outer Creek out of play.
See all kinds of stuff happening here in the second inning. Positive for Rowan. I got that four nothing lead now. You can see HI Express who took the first game four to one. And that'll be high, eyeball high for a ball, and that'll make it a one two count. Yeah, so Carter at first, Aaron Bloomer at second, Jeff Bloomer at the plate. And oh yeah, he got fooled on that breaking ball and went down low fishing for it and will swing through it. It'll become the second out. Yeah, now TJ Oliver, who had a drove in two RBIs with a single back in the first at the plate with the two down and two on. And that'll be a swinging strike on Oliver. And Perrin trying to just wiggle out of this and give up those two runs. Yeah, he'll ask for time. It's a long time, a green on a sign between pitcher catcher right there between McGuire and Perrin. And TJ back in the box set to go and the pitch on the way. And again, that's going to be a foul ball, dead ball. Nobody can advance up on that. And have a no ball, two strike count on TJ Oliver. The on deck batter is Mike Sorelli. Yeah, so TJ set. And again, the pitcher pairing has been very deliberate between pitches here the first two innings. And that's off the fist and in the air and looks to be playable. He'll come in, make the grab. Post 31, though, able to play a couple more. They'll have a 4 nothing lead going into the third inning to play over at the HI Express squad in game number two. And Rodolfo, the first pitch here of the third inning, will be called a ball. And he's pitched very well here. For the first two innings, he's got a 4 nothing lead. And he's looking at Ryan Wetzel, then Ryan McGuire, and then top of the order, Matt Paz. And that looks to be playable by the third baseman, Mike Sorelli. He calls for it, steps on infield grass, and will make the grab for the first out of the third inning. Yeah, he's not wasting a lot of pitches. He's not going super deep into counts, and he faced three batters in that. He first faced four, but because of the double play and then throwing out the runner trying to steal, he only actually pitched a th three full batters, and he pitched a four batters in the second and got the first batter out here in the third now the catcher, Ryan McGuire up. First time he swung the bat today. He didn't play in the first game of the doubleheader. And there's a curveball strike by Rodolfi. So Joe Rodolfi kind of finding his rhythm now. And catching and firing a lot more pace between pitches for Rodolfi. Catching and firing much quicker than his counterpart, Tyler Perrin. But that's the way it goes. When you're struggling, you tend to take more time between pitches. That'll be high, and that'll become ball two. Two and one to count to the number nine batter, McGuire. Yeah, that first inning, Rodolfi walked two batters, but they had a double play, and then his catcher able to throw the runner out trying to steal, and then he really kind of settled down nicely after that. That was a swinging strike on a good fastball. So with a 2-2 count, one down, McGuire will watch that one break in, and we'll have a full count now as it goes to three balls and two strikes. With Rodolfi, he uses the breaking ball to set up his fastball. A lot of pitchers are vice versa, but he throws many more breaking balls than he does the fastball. That's going to be out of play over the backstop screen and all that on the River Street, and we'll stay with a full count now, three balls and two strikes. Again, the website for Peg TV is www.pegtv.com, and you can click on there and not only get the schedule for Channel 15, Channel 2021, but also you can just click on Video On Demand and watch programs right there on your computer. Now it's going to be on a short stop. No, Sorelli will step in at third on the run, flip it over, come down on the bag and get a nice player there by Bloomer. Sorelli able to charge the ball, throw off bounce, sailed on him a little bit, the throw did, but Bloomer went up and got it and came down and towed the bag. So in the book, it looks like a 5-3 ground out, but it's got a lot more excitement into it than just that. Now on top of the order, Matt Paz up, and Paz walked back in the first inning. That was his only plate appearance thus far in his second ball game. And so Rodolfi looking for a 1-2-3 inning. Off the end of the bat and foul. 
Yeah, we're going to have all kinds of more Legion baseball for you on Channel 15, but also you got to start thinking about the uh, upcoming soccer season. Mill River boys and girls soccer action and College of St. Joseph's soccer action. That'll be well outside in the dirt, and that'll be a ball, and we'll have a 1-1 count. So, you know, it's never too early to start thinking about it, and always watch sport speed also. That's on uh, Mondays at 4.30, Tuesdays at 5.30, and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And then if you want to think, we'll start thinking way ahead in the fall, get out of this hot, muggy weather, there's always the Halloween Parade Princess, the Pumpkin Princess. Oh, God, show that's on Channel 15 Live. It's where they select the princess in her court. And then there's the actual Halloween Parade done live on Channel 15. And then the really big show starring Sam Garuso. That's on Channel 15 in the first weekend in November. So, I mean, there's all kinds of tremendous programming still coming up. So a 2-2 two -two count with two down, and it'll be inside just a tad bit too far. And Rodolfi will go to a, another full count here. Sean Stone, the on-deck batter for the HI Express. <coughs> and that's going to be pulled down to first. Bloomer says he's got it, and he's had a put out, and he had that nice assist, and that'll be the inning, and we'll have a 4 nothing lead for Rutland going into the bottom of the third. Australia had a Fuller's choice. There's only a bat back in the first inning. He'll start things off here in the bottom of the third, and Tyler Perrin still on the mound for the HI Express squad. McGuire still is catcher, and we'll go around the horn on the infield in just a second. Australia will not be able to catch up to that high inside fastball. And this is a good chance to tell you if Sean Fernandez plays first base defensively. Ryan Wetzel's at second. Nick Avery's your shortstop. Sean, Sean Stone is at third. The outfield has Paz, Skelza, and Riley in it out there for the HI Express, and he could not hold up on that breaking ball, and he'll be down two strikes now. One and two to count. The leadoff batter here in the bottom of the third, Mike Sorelli, but Alex Moskowski and Matt Merritt, the next two batters, two up for post 31. He'll lay off that one in the dirt, and we'll even things out now at two and two. Rutland with two runs in the first, two runs in the second, and that's how we've got to where we are right now at four to nothing, post 31 with the lead. Then Channel 15, located in Building 24 at the House Center. Always open for the public to come on in and take a walk around and get to know the staff down there and see the facilities. And Sorelli thought that Perrin took too long. We'll ask and receive time from the home base umpire. And they got him looking. Yeah, fooled him with the breaking ball, and that'll become the third strikeout of the ball game. For Perrin, that's the first one looking. The other two were swinging. Now Moskowski up, and he had struck out back in the first inning. And again, that was his only time at the plate. Again, Moskowski with that obviously left-handed batter. And they put just a very slight shift on for that side. Now be fouled off for strike one. Again, I already mentioned some of the upcoming games for you. But again, the 7th, 27th, July 27th, Bells Falls is a... That'll end the regular season here at St. Peter's Field. It's a nine-inning ball game. Starts at noon. Bellows Falls post 37. Always a good ball club. That's going to be a strike right there. And then on 26, July 26, Windsor, which was an away game, becomes a home double header starting at noon here at St. Peter's Field. So July 26 is now a home double header against Windsor. That started outside and stayed outside for a ball. And some games in the nearer future. July 19th, July 20th, both noontime starts, and July 22nd, that's a 5.30 start time. And that is going to be ripped down to first, handled, and Fernandez will step on the bag and as he gets the put out unassisted. And two down now for post 31 as Matt Merritt comes up. He singled and scored back in the second inning. Like I said, he's done a nice job of batting out of either the eighth or ninth spot all season long for post 31 and having a good doubleheader here today on the home turf, St. Peter's Field. So in a 4 nothing game in the bottom of the third, the HI Express pitcher, Tyler Perrin, would love to have a 1-2-3 inning. He's one batter away from doing that. Fouled out of play for a strike. Let me take this opportunity to thank American Legion post 31 for let me come set up, videotape their baseball games, and put it on Channel 15 for the community to enjoy. And 
very much appreciated that they allow me to do all this. And that just missed. Tried that backdoor breaking ball and just did miss. And it'll be a 1 1 count. So there's two out, nobody on. And Rutland right now with that 4 0 lead. Good eye right there by Merritt laying off that breaking ball. And he'll work the count now to a, his favorite, 2 and 1. Like I mentioned before, Joe Rodolfi, the pitcher, number 9 spot on deck for post 31. And that'll be followed on the screen. So we go to a 2 2 count. As Rutland got off early offensively here in this ballgame, something they just couldn't do. In the first ballgame, you take the last three innings, they had the runners on, and they just couldn't get that big hit they needed. They'll skip in the dirt, and all of a sudden, it goes to a full count. And so Perrin got the first two out on a strikeout and then the ground out the first. Looking for that third out here and that's going to be the shortstop. Avery with a big hop will set fire and have it. A 1-2-3 inning for HI Express. They'll come into the fourth down four for nothing post 31. Yeah, and the first pitch of the fourth inning is a ball to Sean Stone. He'll be followed by Pat Riley, then Nick Avery. As Joe Rodolfi has worked himself into a nice rhythm here. Boy, Dorian on the reply. Dorian on the fly, and he'll cut it off from going to the gap. Boy, I tell you, that speed's awesome. Right there, saved a double. So they'll have a leadoff batter on. Stone, that's his first base hit, I believe, of this doubleheader. Now, one thing the HI Express squad has been when they do have base runners in both ball games, they've been aggressive. So we'll see what they want to do here with Stone up and Pat Riley at the plate. There's the move to first. And again, that wasn't his best stuff. I was just letting him know he was looking at him over there. Riley walked in the first and was thrown out trying to steal second base. Back to back throws to first. Aaron Bloomer. Holding the runner on defensively over there, and Matt Barrett remains at second base defensively. T.J. Oliver is your shortstop. Mike Shirley's at third. Ryan Carter is your catcher. I'll set that outfield for you in just a second. That'll be low for a ball. You have Mike McMahon in right field. Rob Doring your center fielder, and Alex Muskowski is in left field. And Rodolfi from the stretch is going to come to the plate. He'll miss wide, and... He'll go to a two ball, no strike count, and he's getting a little caught up with the base runner at first base there. Avery on deck. Yeah, he had walked two people back in the first. Rodolfi did, but he also had induced a double play, and his catcher threw a runner out trying to steal, and that helped him out immensely. Then he had a very decent second inning. He faced four batters, gave up one single, didn't score. And then he had a 1-2-3 third. Post-31 has two double plays between the two games. And that's a strike on a of th the 3-0 count. Now it becomes 3-1. And, and Rodolph, he's still catching and firing without a lot of wait time. And that breaking ball, he in the batter, as patient as he could be, but Riley did come out in front and followed it off, and all of a sudden it goes from a 3-0 to a 3-2 count to Pat Riley, the runner at first. I've been watching him. He's Stone there, Sean Stone. He's been having a very conservative lead down at first base. And there's the throw over. They got him in a pickle. They're just going to run right at him. That's what you're supposed to do. You see that T.J. Oliver is going to flip the first, and they got him. Well executed pickle play. Rodolfi, the pitcher, will apply the tag himself and they will erase the base runner. So that's two base runners today that have either been thrown out stealing or picked off right there. That was a, again, well executed pickle. Now back to the batter. He's got a full count and one out now. Nobody on base. And that's a walk. I tell you, the, the strange thing about the pickup play was that he had thrown over twice back to back and then it wasn't like a great jump off the bag by Stone. 
So I don't know if he just thought there would be no way he'd throw over that often again. So Riley on first base. Remember, he was thrown out trying to steal back in a second. And this is going to be through the hole at short for a base hit. Miskowski will pick it up and hold the runners to first and second. So how big was that pickoff now as we'd had a walk and a single since? Fernandez, who grounded out to Aaron Bloomer at first base at the plate, now with one out and two on. Four nothing, post 31 with the lead. We're in the top of the fourth. Scheduled for seven. First game won by Hartford, four to one, behind a 12 strikeout performance of Sean Fernandez. And Rodolfi from the stretch with the long look, and that is a great stop. Great stop by Carter. I'll tell you what, he used every inch he had to reach out and get that ball. It was actually the pitch was behind the hitter. And he keeps the runners at first and second with that good quick play behind the plate. Again, Carter has caught both ends of this double header on a very humid day. That one came in high, never really broke, and stays up for a ball. Ball two, 2-0 two oh the count. And again, Rodolfi. Hadn't had a base runner on since two outs to go in the second inning. He had a good rhythm going along between the pitches, and that's going to be down toward the hole at second. Merritt will pick it up and get him at first. And a little dribbler at Merritt. I believe that's seven chances for Merritt combined between the two games, and he's been flawless. Out there, so that goes as a 4-3 ground out. The runners do move up to second and third, but... Tyler Perrin up. He had a single in his only plate appearance, and that was back in the second inning. And prior to this inning, he was the last hitter to get on board against Rodolfi. So two down in the top of the fourth for the HI Express squad. And that fastball, again, stayed high on Rodolfi. The defense has played actually very, very good today for post-31 in both the first game and so far here in the second game. You can see him lift his toe at the last second to get out of the way of that inside pitch. Scoring, well, pretty simple. Two runs in the first for post 31, two runs in the second, and that's it for the day, 4 nothing. And Rodolfi now will push it to a three ball, no strike count. Always an interesting part of the count, whether they're going to give him the green light if it's in his hitting zone or let him just take all the way. And see, that drives me nuts as a, as a, that's usually the best pitch in the count and very seldom do you see a player get the okay to swing away at that. So it goes to three balls and one strike. You say, well, if he walks, what does it matter? Well, he could have done a lot more damage. Oh, that will be through the hole. That will drive in a run. Muskowski will pick it up. And the HI Express squad now with a 4-1 to one game as they are able to punch in. That run with the RBI by Perrin. And it'll bring up Skelza. So Perrin with a two for two day and an RBI. And this will bring coach Tony Sorelli out to the mound with Ryan Carter, the catcher. And they're going to talk to Joe Rodolfi. He's got the two outs. And runners at the corners. Now Joe, four innings isn't a lot of work for him. He hasn't thrown deep into the count and hasn't faced a lot of batters. So this could be more just a settle you down, let's get the job done pep talk. I doubt very much they're going to take the ball from him. Acquista pace in that first ball game went the distance all seven innings, so they are minus Chad Ryan, who left. He hadn't felt well at the start of the first game, had to leave halfway through it, so that's one arm that isn't available. It actually was talked before the game that he might be the starting pitcher here in the second ball game, but that just didn't work out. So quite the union meeting as this is taking quite a while on the mound, and they're going to break it up and see what transpires after that lengthy meeting. Yeah, Skells is the center fielder up. He grounded out to Matt Merritt at second base, and that's the only time he has been up. Getting a second look now through the order at Rodolfi. Wetzel on deck behind Skells. Again, Skells in that first ball game had four putouts in center field and really put on quite an exhibition of, we think we have a good center fielder, and we do in Rob Dorian, but, but I tell you, this Hartford squad got a very good center fielder in Skells. Fun to watch. Good teams come play each other like this. That's a fall ball strike. Two down, four to one. Fourth inning, post 31, trying to maintain that 41 lead as the HI Express squad or Hartford 
with their best threat going here in this inning. They've already got one run in and runners at the corners. I'm surprised we haven't seen them start that runner at first. Perfect situation, first and third. To be aggressive with the base runner at first. There's the throw over and they got him. Oh, they picked him off. Rodolfi gets him and that's going to be, they've thrown a runner out trying to steal. They've got a runner in a pickle. Now they picked one off. So they're helping their own cause out tremendously here. They'll have that four to one lead over Hartford going into the bottom of the fourth. Tyler Perrin with three strikeouts in the ballgame so far. He enjoyed a 1-2-3 third inning. Prior to that, he had gone oh, seven batters deep in both the first and second, gave up the four runs in the first two innings, and seems to be settling down now. He's going to be looking at the number nine hitter, Joe Rodolfi. That'll be outside for a ball. Rodolfi had a single and scored back in the second inning. Top of the order sitting on deck, and Rob Dorian and Aaron Bloomer will follow. And that's going to be fouled out of play. And, yeah, it's a good chance to catch up on the defensive alignment for the HI Express squad or Hartford. And it's going to be Ryan McGuire at the catcher spot. Sean Fernandez at first. Ryan Wetzel's at second. Nick Avery's your shortstop. Sean Stone is at third. Matt Paz, Logan Skelza, and Pat Riley make up the outfield. And that'll be fouled into the screen. And we'll stay with a 1-2 count now. 4-1. In the bottom of the four, scheduled for seven, and it looks like Mother Nature is going to cooperate, and I doubt we'll see a mercy rule between these two good teams today. The breeze, not a factor at all today. It wasn't in the first game, and it's not here in the second game. And a busy week for Pulse 31. Doubleheader today, which is Saturday, and I know we're taped delayed, but doubleheader tomorrow Sunday against Essex. And then on Tuesday, I believe, yeah, Tuesday I'll be back. South Royalton will be here. Then they're on the road until the 19th of July. And that gives you a chance to catch up and put that date down to get here and watch a game live and in person. And he went fishing, couldn't catch up to it. That low outside fastball, and it'll be the fourth strikeout of the ball game for Tyler Perrin. Now Rob Dorian up and one for two today. He grounded out to the pitcher in the first and then had an infield uh, single back in the second. And something that goes unnoticed was the base hit by Hartford in the top of this inning. Dorian got to the gap and cut it off and got it back in the infield. But it, by, by his speed and anticipation, he got there and held it to a single. And he made it look so nonchalant that it just goes without really getting the attention it should. But tremendous center fielder Dorian is. That pitch outside. 2-0 the count to Rob Dorian. And... That's going to be toward the gap, toward the gap, and it's going to roll to the wall. It'll hit the base of the wall in center. And Dorian will coast into second base, and he'll have a two, a one-out double here in the bottom of the fourth. And again, you can see the strength there as he went down on a pitch that really wasn't a bad pitch at all. It was low and outside, and he just drove it to the opposite field, and he'll be at second base with the one-out. Aaron Bloomer up. He's had an infield single and scored in the first and reached on a fielder's choice in the second. So back to the stretch goes Perrin, and he'll be outside, and McGuire will make the grab, and Dorian will head back and retag second. So Rutten with a chance here to get some more cushion on that lead at 4-1 to one right now. And... Um, Pitch that appeared to stay inside will get the benefit of the doubt. It'll be called a strike. Don't forget Rutland in that first ball game, as well as Fernandez pitch, they had him on the ropes in the fifth, sixth, and seventh and just could not get the hit they needed. That's going to be fouled off the end of the bat, and he'll go to a 1-2 count now. Bloomer and then Carter, the on-deck batter. Bloomer at the plate right now, Carter on deck. In that first ball game, it was... Carter had to double. He had the only extra base hit for the post-31 squad. That came in the first inning. So after the long look in, the sign settled on, and that'll be high, squirted out of his hand, and we'll even things up now at 2-2. Two and two. Again, that website is www.pegtv.com, P-E-G-T-V. Nice feature they added in January. If you can't watch the games on TV, you can just go to the website, click on Video On Demand, pick the game you want, and watch the game right on your computer. And this is going to be playable. Yep, picked up by Wetzel on the outfield grass. So the second baseman able to track it down, show his range, and make the grab for the second out. 
Yeah, Carter with a single scored a run and reached on an error his last time up there. Not that they will, but with first base open and two down, they can pitch to him a little bit uh, cautiously. Plus the fact that Quistapace not in the batting order due to an injury, and that's going to be fouled out of play toward Otter Creek and over the fence and out of play. And so Dorian will head back down and retag at second base. He had that one out double. Four strikeouts in the ball game for HI Express pitcher Tyler Perrin. Again, he hasn't pitched that bad at all. A lot of bend on that, and that was a good looking pitch. So on a sharp curveball, he'll go to 0 and 2 in the count to Carter. Again, Tony Sorelli, the head coach here at. Post 31, he's joined by Jamie Briggs and George Bennett. Ron Fairbanks is the general manager. And Natasha Fairbanks, or McPhee actually, Natasha McPhee is the bat girl. That brings you up to date on everybody in the dugout. That's going to be the backstop, and Dorian will easily head down to third base on the wild pitch. So McGuire will retrieve the ball and get it back out to his pitcher. And, and he's trying to wiggle out of this. She, they just got the run back in the top half of the inning. They don't want to give the run back here in the bottom of the fourth. So a one-two count to Ryan Carter. Again, he's put in quite a day's work. He's catching both ends of the game, and that's going to be to Avery deep in the hole and can't scoop it out. The run will score, and Carter will be safe at first base. So that was really right on the edge of the outfield grass, and it was going to be a long, tough throw for Avery. So unofficially, and I am totally unofficial, I'm going to give him a base hit, but my book doesn't count. And the run does come in, so it goes to 5-1 to one Rutland here in the bottom of the fourth. They'll flip over to first, and the ball will get away from Fernandez, and he'll just nonchalantly go and get it. And George Bennett shouldn't reach out and try to stop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> the first base coach for post 31. And I'll have to ask... Glenn, I'm just surprised they never had a courtesy runner all day for Ryan in the heat and catching both ends of the doubleheader. How can we courtesy run for Ryan? Okay. That's why I asked Glenn. Yep. So they'll flip over to first. They're very preoccupied with Ryan over at first base. Two down, though. In a 5-1 game, called good pitch. Good pitch right there as Bloomer at the plate. He has walked and struck out today. If Bloomer can get on base here, T.J. Oliver, the shortstop, sits in the on-deck circle for post-31. Oh, another good pitch. Mixing him up nicely, that breaking ball. Just kind of tickled the corner and dropped in there. And with a 1-2 count, Carter with about a four-step lead off the bag. And parent to the plate, and that's going to be, oh, it's going to be through the hole. And what happened there? Carter's going to try to stretch it for third base, and he's going to be there. And a nice job at third base of knocking the ball down and not allowing it to go out of play. And then on the trail end of that run, Bloomer goes into second. What happened there is Carter gave him the impression he's going to steal second. The second baseman, Wetzel, had gone over to cover the bag for the throw, and that's all the space they needed for that ball to squirt through the hole between first and second. So, again, your running game, does a lot. I mean, you didn't actually have to steal the base for the running game to come into effect there. Just the fact that you made the defense shift around. Your running game affected it that way. And a nice piece of running by both Carter and Bloomer. And Oliver, who's had a single and a first that scored two runs and then flied out to right field, is up. And there are two down, but a chance here to really get a couple more runs in. Ooh, and he'll swing over the top of that breaking ball. And then we'll have a 1-1 one, one count. And TJ's done the circuit today. He started off the first ball game in right field, went to shortstop late in that ball game. Starts the game here at short and has done a good job at the plate. That's going to be up the middle. Avery on the charge with the throw. He'll get him. But the post 31 able to pick up a run. They'll have a 5-1 lead over Hartford going into the fifth inning of play from St. Peter's Field.
Gelza was at the plate when they picked off Perrin at first base. And in that fourth inning, they picked off Stone, and then they picked off Perrin back in the first. They threw Riley out trying to steal. So, I mean, uh, been very effective in controlling the base running of the HI Express squad. That's Glenn Carter, the head coach at MSJ, courtesy runner rule. He <laughs> told me they can't do that in Legion Ball. <laughs> so foolish me. <laughs> Am I embarrassed by that? Absolutely not. I've done much dumber things than that. That's got a chance to be caught by McMahon. He'll come in and grab it on the line drive. And McMahon, we've seen pitch, but he looks pretty solid out there in the outfield also. Like I said, I watched him play for the Red Thunder squad, Rick Samersky's team. Ryan Wetzel up. He's only been up once, and he popped up to Mike Sorelli at third base. As again, Rodolfi's been very efficient out there on the mound for post 31. Of course, Rodolfi, outstanding soccer player in the fall, hockey player in the winter, and of course, baseball player here in the spring and summer. And I don't think they're gonna have a chance at that. Nope. That'll just be a fall ball as Bloomer tried, gave it a good effort, but it was gonna be out of his reach all the way, so. Getting more games to watch for coming up on Peg TV. And one of them, a couple of things is the uh, the All-Star basketball game that just took place down at CSJ. You got the scrimmage against the international team, which was very interesting to watch. That's an event that's coming up on Channel 15 to watch. And also the Western Mass men's and women's games against Vermont high school All-Star basketball players. Uh, both very good games. A swing and a miss. A nice pitch as it moved down and away from the right-handed batter. Goes to a 2-2 count now to Ryan Wetzel. Catcher Ryan McGuire on deck for the HI Express squad. And I believe he held up. I don't even know if they'll appeal. It looked like from this angle, 400 feet away, like he had held up. And it'll be a full count now with the one down as they're at the 7-8-9 spot in the order. And that'll be a walk. So with one out, the HI Express squad will have the base runner on. And let's see if they try to get their offense cranked up by turning the base runner loose here. McGuire, been up once. He grounded out to Sorelli at third base. So it was a 5-3 ground out. Top of the order, Matt Paz on deck. Post 31 has turned to double play in each ball game. And that's going to be a thrower to first. And... A very short leading back, very safely, easily, was the base runner, Wetzel. Yeah, post 31 with two runs in the first, two runs in the second, one in the fourth to account for their five runs. And a swing and a miss, swung over the top of the breaking ball. And HI Express with just that one run in the top of the fourth. Surprisingly, I'm looking through my book, Rodolfi without a strikeout yet in the ball game. And again, the throw over and runner. We'll just take the one or two steps back and re-tag. Keisha Mintz, game one was a HI Express win, 4-1 to one over Rutland. Sean Fernandez with the win and 12 strikeouts in the ball game. And that's going to be a base hit through the hole between first and second. McMahon will charge his ball, come up and get it back to the infield. So runners at first and second now with one down. So a walk and a single after the flyout. And now Matt Paz up. He walked in the first and then grounded out to Aaron Bloomer at first base in the third. Rodolfi wants a new baseball. And they'll oblige him as they flip it into Ryan Carter, the catcher. He ended up out to the umpire. And we'll be good to go here. Again, the defense stays the same out there. Aaron Bloomer at first. Matt Merritt's at second base. Your shortstop in this ball game is T.J. Oliver. And at third base, Mike Sorelli. Ryan Carter behind the plate. Dorian McMahon and Muskoski the outfield. Rodolfi on the mound, and the pitch will stay high for a ball. But, yeah, so you've, you've got those basketball games coming up to watch. But also you'll have the post-31 games, as you've seen here, Hartford, Essex, and South Royalton. And that's going to be lifted toward Miskoski. He'll call for it, make the catch, and quickly get the ball back into play. Two down now as post-31 trying to leave the bases at a first and second situation. Now Sean Stone up. He hit into a double play in the first inning, had a single, and was picked off in the fourth. And don't forget, every Saturday at 4 o'clock on Channel 15, you can turn the 
TV on and watch all the local sports for that week as the games of the week are played starting at 4 p.m. every Saturday. And what Tom Leipold, the program director, does is he just starts them at 4. If there's 10 games, he plays them over and over. If there's two games, he plays them over and over. He plays them right to the church service come Sunday morning so you can get your fill of local sports. You can read about it in the paper, which is great, or right? then you can turn around and watch it on TV and see what they wrote about. And for fall sports, I already know that I've got Mill River boys and girls soccer on the docket, as well as CSJ men's and women's soccer. So three balls, no strikes here with two down, two on, and Rodolfi got to take it one pitch at a time. We'll look into Carter, get the sign, and 3-0, and as usual, right there down the heart of the plate goes the 3-1 the count. And like I said, for the most part, oh, they're going to have him. Yeah, they got to call time as they want him to tuck in his shirt and look good for the camera, and Rodolfi obliges him. The big lefty all set. And that'll be in the dirt for ball four, and that will load him up with two down. Yeah, see, when his shirt was untucked, he was throwing strikes. So that could be the key to it here. So Pat Riley up. He walked in the first and in the fourth. He was thrown out trying to steal a base in the first, and he eventually scored in the fourth. And Coach Shirelli coming out to talk to Joe Rodolfi. Now, it looks more like a mechanical meeting, talking about where his placement is on the rubber. And again, I don't think Joe's tired going into the fifth inning here, and he hasn't thrown an overabundance of pitches. So Coach Sorelli will make the visit. And again, Hartford or the HI Express squad will have the bases loaded two down. And again, the HI Express thing is a Holiday Inn Express. What I was explaining to me was the Legion team didn't, couldn't financially field a team. And I've been ashamed with all the talent that the Hartford area had to put on the baseball field. So the Holiday Inn stepped up and they actually financed the team. Thus the name the HI Express. As I got to look up that number. Hartford making a switch, putting number one out there on the bases, and you know what? I tape my pages together. <laughs> if you bear with me, I'll tell you who number one is. John McKinney is out there for Hartford, number one at second base. So John McKinney into the ball game, and that's what all the paperwork's being done by the home base umpire. And we are just about set to resume play. Key moment, actually. Hartford down 5-1. to one, Fifth inning, seventh inning game. And they have the bases loaded, even with the two outs. They're looking to get some damage done here. That's going to be fouled out on the River Street. Again, I, I hope you watch the games on 15, but I really urge you to get out in person and get some bodies down here at St. Peter's Field. Got a, a good team to come watch. Inexpensive, doesn't cost a penny to come through the gates and watch a game. And it's a nice way to, you know, if you got your family, it's a nice family thing to do. But really, make a point to get down in person and catch a game live. You can sit in the bleachers in center field, the bleachers on either side of first and third. Bring a lawn chair and sit right by an home base. Not a bad seat in the house. And you can hear the St. Peter's church bells ringing in the background. At 5 o'clock. And a uh, breaking ball stayed high. And you go to a 1 2 count. Looking to end the threat here in the fifth. HI Express with the bases loaded. And Rodolfi back to that full windup. And he'll get him on the strikeout. First strikeout of the ball game, a big one. They'll leave him full and run, will maintain that 5 to 1 lead going into the bottom of the fifth. All season to say this, but Casey at the plate. Casey battles in the pinch hit for Mike Sorelli. So he'll get up there in the bottom of the fifth as Tyler Perrin, number 10, with his shirt untucked on the mound for the HI Express game. Now, now tongue in cheek in it, but they stopped the game and made Rodolfi tuck his jersey in. Yes, it is an irrelevant point, but. One that had to be made. And that's going to be a strike right there. They'll make it a 1 1 count. Battles, Muskowski do up next to Matt Merritt. We'll see who Coach Sorelli sends up to the plate. He was out talking to the umpire with his uh, scorebook. 
I don't know if it was actually Tony or his assistant coach. And good eye there. We'll lay off that. It'll become ball two. Ken Rutland opened the season on the road with a win over Chester. They put a lot of runs on the board, then came here and had a good ball game in their home opener against Bennington. And that's going to be foul as he got around and ripped it foul. And then Fairhaven and Sam Maycumber came to town, and what a ball game Sam pitched. one nothing win for Fairhaven. The only walk of the ball, run of the ball game came in on a buck. And uh, pretty much felt like a playoff game the whole thing did. It was just a great ball game. That's going to be down to Avery at short. He'll have to charge, and he doesn't come up with it. He'll roll to the outfield, and Battles will be on to lead off the bottom of the fifth year for post 31. Now, that might have actually hit the seam between the dirt and the grass at the last second and evaded the glove of Avery. But in any event, Battles is on first base. And I missed the call. It's lefty, so it's got to be Muskoski up. Now they'll bring a runner in for Battles and just need him to turn around. I'll collect his jersey number in just a second. For another left-handed batter up and Muskoski. Muskoski struck out in the first, then grounded out the first to his last at bat. So post 31 with two runs in the first, two in the second, one in the fourth. Nobody down here in the bottom of the fifth, and the leadoff batter on. So Muskoski, and you see the Suns come back out here at St. Peter's Field. Mike Triller, number 15, is the base runner. As a small ball, and it's going to be in play. That's going to be a tough play. Stone, got to eat it. They're going to throw out the second and throw it to center field. And on a throw to center field, they're going to have Triller go over to third base. And for the first time today, we by either side, we've seen the ball thrown around sloppily on the infield. So that error puts runners at the corners at first and third. And Stone came in. It would have been an almost impossible play to make at first. And I was surprised he threw to the vacated second, but the second baseman was not there, and he just threw, threw the bag into center field. And all this happened with nobody down. And what's going on right now is, yep, yeah, I'll flip it over. You see the Hartford coaching staff over there at first base. And it's warm, and it's humid, and cramp being worked out. Well, we don't need to watch that. I'll fade down. We'll come back, see what happens after that. Now everything worked out. And Matt Merritt at the plate, and he'll take a strike. Like I said, between the two games today, Matt Merritt having a big day at the plate and with the glove. He's had a single in this ball game. He had a couple base hits in the first ball game, and every ball that's been hit to him, he's been able to make the play. And Muskowski will slide back head first and be there ahead of the throw and be safe. And that's Triller over at third base for post 31. And that's going to be foul fair. They're going to wave it around. I had to wait and see. And they're going to hold the runner up. Muskowski at second. They'll drive the run in. And that'll be an RBI single for Matt Merritt. So they'll push the lead now to 6-1 to one post 31. Rodolfi up now, so Merritt, again, just having a good, solid Saturday, both games, fielding and hitting. Rodolfi with a single in the second, eventually came around to score in that inning, and then he struck out in the fourth. Tyler Perrin remains on the mound for HI Express. That's a good stop by Avery. I know you got to be concerned about the base runners, but sometimes today that's really gotten the uh, HI Express squad in a lot more trouble. Miskowski with a very short leadoff second. And Rodolfi trying to lay down the bunt will follow it off. He'll go to an 0-1 count. Now, it's interesting. See if they stay with the bunt. 
I, I said in the first game, my points are relevant, but I think if you start with the bunt, you got to stay with the bunt. We'll see what they want to do here in an all-one count. Stone at third base, still staying on way back at the grass, and that's going to, boy, stay fair, stay fair, stay fair. That's going to stay fair. That's home grounds keeping right there. So they will have the bases loaded now as Rodolfi will head down to first base. And he just deadened the ball. Beautifully. Now Dorian to top the order up with the bases loaded and nobody down. One run already in and a chance for a big inning here for post 31. And Tyler Perrin to the full windup will be low and outside. Nowhere to put him on a walk. Four strikeouts in the ball game for Perrin. And that was a good pitch, and that'll be a 1-1 count now on the fall ball. Again, Rodolfi's at first base. Merritt is at second, and Miskowski at third for post 31. As the table's been set, as they're at the top of the order, Dorian Bloomer Carter, the possibilities of the next three batters, and Dorian will duck out of the way of that pitch, and they'll become ball two. Six to one. Rutland trying to salvage the split here with the HI Express team. They dropped the first game four to one. Post 31 did. Oh. He'll tickle the outside corner and even it up at 2-2. And what happened there was most of the time, the pitcher's just not sure what he wants to throw or feels good about what he wants to throw. We'll just buy a little time. Good stop by McGuire. Pitch in the dirt, and we'll have a full count with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Dorian at the plate. Parent on the mound, and the pitch on the way. Nope. Again, he'll just step back off the rubber as they went through the signs twice. He couldn't decide on one, and we'll just reset and get going. That's going to be to Avery, and he'll go for one... Yeah, and they're going to take the one out. And I was very fortunate to get the one out on the flip or good adjustment by Wetzel at second base. They do get the run in. So Miskowski will score. Merritt will go to third. Rodolfi is the force out. And Dorian will be on fielder's choice. Aaron Bloomer up. But he'll be back just ahead of the throw to first base on the pickoff attempt. First and third situation, one out, seven to one. Post 31 with the lead in the bottom of the fifth. And that will stay inside and Bloomer will turn on it. It'll be ball one. Yeah, Ryan Carter, the on-deck hitter for post 31. Again, the mercy rule is 10 run lead and he'll be safe as Dorian scampered back. Yeah, 10 run lead and team trailing has to have full Five full innings of that bat, and that's already happened. So there is a possibility that might come into play here. Off and running, and a base hit up the middle. A solid hit. Dorian heading for third base, and he'll be there ahead of the throw. Yes. An RBI for Bloomer. And I'll tell you what, that was just, you could hear that solid contact. And so Carter up. With runners at first and third, still the one out. Eight to one now, Rutland with the lead, and Carter can end the ball game with a home run. Not to put any expectations on him, but <laughs> that would make it 11 to one. So Carter will look down, get the sign from Coach Sorelli. He's flashing quite a few of them down there. And Perrin will have that one outside, and there goes the runner. They'll concede the base to Bloomer. That takes away the force out and also puts them in scoring position. And the, you can still get a double play, just that traditional double play has been taken away. And again, Perrin taking a long time to decide what he wants to throw here to Carter. And so he'll just call time and we're set to go now. 
Yeah, and again, that will dip inside, and we'll go to two balls, no strikes. Jeff Bloomer on deck for post 31. And that's been a consistent call, that outside corner. And they'll be called a strike there, and it goes to 2-1. and one. And an 8-1 to one ball game in the bottom of the fifth. Again, post 31 trying to split the doubleheader here with the HI Express squad. Good eye on a pitch inside. 3-1 the count. Dorian down at third. Aaron Bloomer at second. Ryan Carter at the plate. And he's now going to be at first base as that walk will load him up. For Jeff Bloomer, who has walked, struck out, and singled. And here comes the head coach coming out for the HI Express squad. And this could be Mr. Perrin's afternoon right here. It was a brief visit, and he's going to stay with Perrin. Bases loaded one out, and that's going to be called a strike. Again, bases loaded, good thing offensively, but also gives you more combinations defensively to come up with a double play. There's a force out at any base, and that's going to be strike two. So where he said to Perrin, work for the first two pitches, is Jeff Bloomer. Down in the count, 0 2 TJ Oliver on deck, and that's going to be a foul ball, and it will stay with the 0-2 count. As Rutland's done a much better job of bringing those runners around here in this second ball game. Different pitching, too. Fernandez was outstanding in that first ball game for HI Express. And that's going to be a foul ball. Tell you what, he went down that first baseline, and that wasn't followed by much, but everybody's got to go back, set up on the bases. They'll bring Bloomer back to the batter's box. He's the eighth batter to come to the plate here in the fifth inning for post-31. Rutland with a non-league doubleheader tomorrow. They'll play Essex, two seven-inning games. I have those for you at a later date on Channel 15. <coughs> Again, Tyler Perrin started the ball game for HI Express, and he's trying to tough it out through the fifth inning here. And that's going to be pa a stone, and he's going to throw to first and back to the home base, and got him. Whoa, stone with the long throw to first. And I'm waiting to see if they call him out at first base. Because Hartford thinks they've turned a double play, and I'm not sure. As the umpires will get together and have a meet. What it was was Stone, field of the ball, threw to first. The first baseman came down. Fernandez said he tagged the runner and then threw home, and they, it was a force play at home. If that is the case, Hartford's saying that's the inning. That will be three down. But I missed the. Okay, they're saying he's safe at first, so it's only the one out they got. So it's two down in the inning now. Okay. Well, one thing we've talked about up here in the bleachers is the umpire's not making a call, so you can tell if it's fair, fall, in, out, anything. And that was a good case of it right there. So somebody... Okay, the only out they got was at home base. Okay. <laughs> and it goes stays eight to one. But there are two down now. It's TJ Oliver at the plate. Makes contact and this looks to be playable. As Skelza will make the call, make the catch, and it'll be an eight to one lead for Rutland going into the sixth inning of play from St. Peter's Field in Legion baseball action. Mike Sorelli will now take over on the mound for post 31. He will replace Joe Rodolfi. Rodolfi can only be the winner in the ball game. He can't lose the ball game. And Sorelli will miss with that first pitch. Rodolfi's gone out to play left field. Dorian remains in center. Muskowski's gone over to play right field. And there's been some more changes. Let me catch up to the pitch here. There'll be a strike call at the knee. 
Jeff Bloomer was a DH, has now gone in to play third base in place of Sorelli. Oliver remains a shortstop. Merritt's at second, and Aaron Bloomer is at first. And, of course, Ryan Carter is still behind that plate. And that's up in the air a mile. And Rodolfi says he's got it, and he's not lying. He does. That'll be the first out recorded here in the sixth inning. So Sorelli, who hasn't pitched in over a week, I think it was last Thursday he pitched, We'll get Avery to fly out. Now Sean Fernandez up. He's 0 for 2 today as he grounded out the first base to Aaron Bloomer and then grounded into a 4-3 play, which was Matt Merritt feeling it and throwing it over to Bloomer at first. It's a good attempt by Aaron Bloomer, and that'll be just a strike when everything is settled down here. It was a good attempt diving after it, but just couldn't get to it. So Sorelli, with an 0-1 count, will just march back to the mound, and on deck will be Tyler Perrin for HI Express. So Sorelli, who just recently graduated from MSJ, into the windup and the pitch. Low one outside, and Carter with the snag. Again, just upcoming games that you'll know ahead of time. I know we're taped late. is July 19th and July 20th. Saturday and a Sunday, both noontime starts. And then July 22nd, that's a weeknight, that's a 5.30 start time. So you're looking at Chester, Brattleboro, and Woodstock. Games you can know about ahead of time and get here and catch a game live and in person. And Sorelli will go to a three ball, one strike count. He does have the one out here in the top of the six, scheduled for seven. 8-1 to one post-31 with a lead over HI Express, and that's going to make it a full count, strike at the knee. Good location, good pop on the ball by Sorelli. Into the windup, and he'll walk him. So with one out, they'll have a base runner on in Fernandez. Tyler Perrin, he has singled twice today, and he's got an RBI. And he's also been picked off on base. So Sorelli now will go to the stretch with the base runner on, and he's got a fairly decent move to first base. And that's going to be over the yeah, screen, or not off the screen, and it was caught, but it's a dead ball. It just goes as a fall ball strike. Again, Rutland got off to a good start. They scored four runs between the first two innings, two in the first, two in the second, one in the fourth, and then three in the fifth to account for their eight runs. Oh, big bender of a pitch there, and he'll get the call on a strike. Again, the hitter, the batter, Perrin completely off guard on that, and it's 0-2 with the count. Tell you what, he waited on that curveball, and Rodolfi will take it right off the top of his shoes. Oh, what a catch by Rodolfi. Tell you what, he had to catch that, or that would have rolled all the way to the fence, and good job out there in left field by Joe Rodolfi. So he's got both putouts so far this inning since leaving the mound and heading out to left field. Now Logan Skelza up, he's 0 for 2. He's grounded out to second base and flied out to right field. And that will be a ball. So in the sixth inning, with two out, one on, Skelza at the plate. Ryan Wetzel is the on-deck hitter for HI Express. And that's inside. That's tight. Tight quarters in there. And that will be 2-0 and count now. So Muskowski, Dorian, and Rodolfi the outfield now for post-31. And that's a foul ball that was caught by, foul tip caught by Ryan Carter and two and one the count. Good fastball, nice pop on it. Sorelli's first inning of work. He came in and replaced Rodolfi who went five innings. Allowed the one run and pitched very effectively. And that's we were out the fist and fall out of play down the first baseline. 
So the 2-2 count now. Mike Shirelli looking for that third out of the sixth inning. I don't really see a clear-cut dominant team in this whole division. I see just a lot of good teams in this division. Can he waited, waited, waited. Merritt going back, going back, and makes the catch in short right field. Matt Merritt, again, having a great weekend here, a great Saturday. will make the catch for the third out. It'll stay 8-1, to one, post 31 with the lead. So Sorelli will start things off here in the bottom of the six, post 31. Again, looking for the split of the doubleheader. And when you look at Bennington, always puts out a solid club. Brattleboro does. Hartford's going to have a real solid club. Skelza with the diving catch in center field. I told you, he just had a brilliant afternoon here defensively. And even with a late break on the ball, he got there and dove and made the great catch for the first out. That's an out with an exclamation point right there. Yeah, I think he had four putouts in the first ball game. A couple of them were. He tracked the ball very well, made an over his shoulder catch. And just real smooth looking out there in center field. Miskowski up now. And I believe, yeah, strike one called on that first pitch. Perrin still out there, number 10, throwing away for HI Express. And he'll go to a 1 1 count now. And Matt Merritt should be the on-deck batter for post-31, the second baseman. That's going to be just over the top of the glove of the first baseman, Fernandez. And that'll be a base hit for Muskowski. So pretty sweet stroke right there by the lefty. And Merritt coming up now. Merritt with two hits today in the second ball game. He had a couple in the first ball game also. And he has an RBI and scored two runs. So... Again, not only is he doing it with the glove out there at second base, but having a good day at the plate. Joe Rodolfi, the on-deck batter, throw to first, and Muskowski diving back safe ahead of the throw. And we're scheduled for seven, and we're in the bottom of the six. And, boy, that breaking ball just dropped right off the table, and Merritt swinging over the top of it for a strike. Now, if you look through the scorebook, I mean, there's they've they've scored runs in the top of the order, middle of the order, and the bottom of the order. There's just been such a good balance offensively here in this second ball game for post 31. Another throw to first, and Muskowski will slide in there ahead of the tag, just kind of sidestep it. Yeah, you look at Dorian scored two runs. Bloomer's Aaron's Bloomer scored a run. Carter scored a run. Those are your first three batters. Sorelli, Muskowski, and Merritt have all scored runs. Rodolfi at the bottom of the order. I mean, so it's all through the order. They've done a good job here in the second ball game. Rutland losing that first one, four to one. But again, in the fifth, sixth, and seventh inning of that, uh, especially, well, you go back to the fourth inning, he had the bases loaded, nobody out, and he picked up one run in that first game. And that's going to be to Avery at short. Can he turn two? There's one. He had a problem getting the ball out of the glove, and... Got him. He'll turn the double play. And, yeah, because Skelton made the great diving catch. That should be three outs. Yes, so we'll go to the top of the seventh. And Hartford needing seven to tie to send this thing into the bottom of the seventh. So Mike Sorelli looking for the final three outs of the ball game here in the top of the seventh. We're looking at the eight, nine, and then top of the order here. He's looking at Wetzel, McGuire, and Paz. Came, he came on in rel relief of Rodolfi. Rodolfi went the first five innings. And then Sorelli came in to pitch the six. And overall, again, the, it, both teams, have, it's been a very good afternoon of baseball action from St. Peter's Field. And that 4-1 to loss, there was a lot of admirable plays in the first game, besides the pitching of Fernandez. Uh, again, we talked about the center fielder, Skelza, for the Hartford squad, and some good plays defensively for Rutland. Matt Merritt steps, stands right out in my mind in that first game. And then the second game, we saw Skelza again with a diving catch, and that'll be fouled out of play. Obviously more offense here in the second game, but again, very equal teams at the end of the afternoon. They're going to possibly split this doubleheader. It looks like they're going to split it right now. 
Bennington looks again like Bennington as usual. They're going to be trouble. And it's going to be to the hole. Picked up by Oliver. The long throw. And he'll get him. TJ Oliver at shortstop. With a good strong throw to Bloomer at first. Now McGuire up. He is one for two today. He is grounded out the third. And he's singled. So with one out and nobody on. That outfield for post 31 looks to be the same with Dorian in center field. Muskowski's in right. That's a straight call. And left fielder's Joe Rodolfi. If things stay the way they are, Rodolfi will get the win here in the second game for post 31. And Sorelli with a variety of deliveries. He's got that funky motion. Hard to pick up the ball. Release point on him. He's got an 0-2 count right now, and he's catching and firing. That'll be low and skip in there for a ball. And again, just one last time, that website for Channel 15 is www.pegtv.com. New feature they added in January, and he'll get a strikeout. He went fastball by the knee, and he'll have the strikeout. And that website, you can click Video on Demand and pick any program you want, whether it's sports, a talk show, a parade, whatever it is. You just click on it and watch right there on your computer. Top Yoder, Matt Paz up two down for HI Express, and they're down to their final out as they trail eight to one in the top of the seventh. And this could be the ball game. Merritt will have it skip under his glove as he was trying to measure it. Muskowski will pick it up, and HI Express still alive with one on and two down. Now the number two batter, Sean Stone up. Stone's lined into a double play. He's singled and he's walked. He also got picked off base after he had that single. And that is a strike. Pause at first base. We'll have Bloomer hold him on defensively and again other games to look for coming up on Channel 15 besides those All-Star High School basketball games is the Essex doubleheader that will be played tomorrow. Looks like the weather is going to cooperate tomorrow according to the weather maps radar set up on Channel 15's bulletin board. I hope it does. Baseball season is too short in Vermont as it is. And that's going to be a good stop. Ryan Carter has caught the first game, complete seven innings, and he's gotten to complete seven inning games here in the second game. And again, that's a, that's a tough job to ask him to do it once on a hot summer day, but do it back to back. And I just don't know what they're going to do about the catching spot. Shouldice was slotted in to be a catcher. He got injured in preseason. Mitch Blair started the first few ball games, did a great job, but he's just left the team. And that leaves him with just Ryan as a catcher right now. And that was an area that they really had good depth at. And, boy, I know Ryan was very happy not being behind the plate, playing first base and coming in the pitch. And now he's, like I said, he's done 14 innings of catching today. And that's going to be the ball game. He'll get him looking at strike three. So Mike Sorelli will come on, do a nice job in relief of Rodolfi. And congratulations to post 31 to get the 8-1 to win here in the second game. And a good effort. Good afternoon in baseball. Hope you get out there and catch a game live. Support Legion Baseball Action and always support Munger Vision.